Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. We, um, the first thing is a planning and zoning density report from Mr. Rodney Ashby. Madam Chair and Commissioners, good to be here with you. Um, this is our annual report on 2021 uh, densities and um, also the last quarter report on where those developments are going. So um, I'll walk through that presentation with you tonight. We're gonna cover growth, what it has done in 2021, where we're at. Um, we're also gonna cover what 2021 subdivision applications were approved or are in review, uh, where the subdivision growth is occurring and how our subdivisions are changing. So this chart is um, showing the growth over time. Nampa has grown at a 10 year average growth rate of 3.44%. And according to Compass, our Metropolitan Planning Association, our estimated population in 2021 is 110,980. Uh, this growth is significant and impacts the city's ability to provide services and maintain our infrastructure. <clears throat> so you can see the red line there shows the rate and the rate is reflected on the right hand side so again, we're just below the 4% uh, rate right now, but it dropped from, from the previous year in 2020. And then the bar graph, the blue bar graph is showing the population. Okay, so just uh, as a uh, note, um, I wanted to reflect um, the difference between what happened last year on this slide, so we had 29 preliminary plats with a total of 2,710 dwelling units. Last year, we had only 11 preliminary plats and only 1,462 dwelling units um, for the preliminary plats. Um, this year, we have six short plats with a total of 26 dwelling units. Last year, we had three but still in the same range of dwelling units, 32. And then uh, this year we have 32 final plots with a total of 1302 dwelling units. And last year we had 29 final plots with a total of in that same range, 1444 dwelling units. And just a reminder, um, a lot of the multifamily dwelling units are not reflected here because these are only on plats or subdivisions that we do and some, or some multifamily developments we don't require a subdivision for. So if you had a, a BC zone, you required a CUP for multifamily, um, we wouldn't, those aren't reflected here in these numbers. Or if you had a RMH zone, and um, you didn't need to do a subdivision, those would not be reflected here. That green grass looks nice. <laughs> and the flowers. Blue, blue sky. <laughs> Okay, we are we good? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll proceed. Hopefully this gets uh, <laughs> communicated out, but primarily this is for your information anyway. So, um, okay. So now we're gonna go to the next slide where we're gonna show um, where the subdivisions are occurring. And as you can see here, they are occurring to the Northeast, to the West and to the South. Uh, in last year's report, we showed that it was the, the Southwest and the Northeast. Um, we are seeing a significant number of subdivisions uh, on final plats uh, being approved in the south now, um, kind of spreading this out quite a bit. Uh, so 
You can see that reflected there on the, on the screen. So I'm going to go into just quickly cover these. Um, I'm not going to go into the details here, but if you have questions, you can see the preliminary plats kind of spread out all over the city. It's, it's pretty impressive that it's, I mean, it's everywhere. So this is the southern portion of that same map. It's in your packet. Um, but you can see them all over the city. And here are those uh, preliminary plats and the number of dwelling units approved for each of those. Here are the final plats. So again, these were shown on that first map where they're located primarily to the northeast, to the west, and to the south. Again, the southern section of that map showing those uh, occurring to the south. Again, the list of final plats and their um, associated dwelling units. I'm happy to go over any details here, but uh, this is all in your packet as well. Then here are the short plats. I've divided them out into the north and the south here as well. Um, pretty small numbers here. Okay. So how are subdivisions changing? In the past five years, the city has been approving significantly more subdivisions and more dwelling units than previous years. I'm gonna step back away from it. <clears throat> Final plat subdivision densities have remained relatively consistent, generally between three and four units. And you can see that reflected here. So this is an average gross density for final plats by year. Uh, 21 was just under, or, or just above 3.5. Um, in, the in the past couple of years, that came down from just above four units. Um, so again, it's just this, generally about three to four dwelling units per, per year, uh, uh, every year, three to four dwelling units. Rodney, what was the spike in 2015 for the? Yeah, good question. So um, in 2015, we had a bunch of uh, several uh, projects that came in under the Okay, and the last slide here. Uh, this graph shows the number of units approved for final plats per year in black and the number of acres approved for final plat development in gray. This shows a dramatic increase in the number of units approved through the final plat process from 2013 to 2019. Last year, we assumed that the drop in units approved by final plats in 2020 related to the COVID pandemic However, a slight decrease in 2021 indicates that other factors are impacting these numbers. Uh, the number of units approved in 2021 may be related to the number of preliminary plats entering the development process in the past. Remember, that's a, kind of a cycle. We get these preliminary plats, and then a few years later, we get the final plats come in, and then maybe a year after that or two years after that, we get the building permits to approve the, the the actual construction. So it's that cyclical process, and I think that that may be related what's going on here with this drop, but you can also see that it's a dramatic, uh, <laughs> thank you. Why did my computer change? That's weird. <laughs> Maybe escape and then. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see, um, as you used to be able to see, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
there's um, that that number is still quite a bit higher than like say 2016 and previous years. I mean, it's it's dramatically up there. We just had a significant spike in 2019. And then we're dropping back down, but it's still quite a bit higher than it has ever been before. We're, we're approving more of these plats than we, I mean, and units than we ever have in the past. Um, do, you know, is, do you know what the average time is between a preliminary plat and a final plat might be? It just depends. I, I've said in the past it's three to six years, somewhere in there, but... It, it really just depends. I've never done an average totaling them all up. That's a, that's a good thought, and I, I could do that um, to give you that number. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I think I've covered most of this. The year 2021 shows a slight decrease in the number of units approved in final plats, but the acreage consumed, which is that bottom line, uh, went up. So this means, this is another indication that subdivisions in 2021 were less dense than previous years and that the acreage of developed land per unit is increasing. In late 2021, the city council adopted a code and you reviewed that code change to encourage more density, a trade-off to allow smaller lot sizes with the requirement to provide greater open space will likely help uh, to better preserve agricultural lands in the future and, and create that greater density. So I, I'm hoping that in the future, you'll see these numbers kind of separating as, as we increase in the number of units approved, you'll, hopefully you'll see that, num that bottom line go down and, and separate from the top line. And that simply means that we're preserving all that open ground for farming out in the county, we're, we're preserving that as much as possible as growth occurs in the city. All right, and that is all I have. Do you have any other questions for me? Last year, I did a, um, a summary of multifamily units that were approved, uh, the permits. I wasn't able to get that this year. There was some confusion about the number of units the building department was giving me versus what we showed last year. So I just didn't want to show you that until we've got that clarified. I'm happy to bring that back in the future and I, and I, when we have that confirmed. Okay. Good information. <clears throat> What's that? Okay, the next item on our agenda is commission staff discussion, final plat staff presentation format. Oh, sorry. I thought it was the, uh, the update from city council. Um, so we, we've been talking as staff how to make these meetings even faster for you. And we find that final plats um, essentially, if they meet code, if they meet the preliminary plat conditions, final plats are pretty simple, right? They just, they just go through. They, they've been approved. So they, they meet all the conditions and the codes. So um, we, we've been talking as staff as maybe just shortening our presentations to this meets, this meets codes and it meets the preliminary plat. And then you will make the motion for each final plat. So I just wanted to get your take on that. Um, we are happy to bring out more detail if you want, but we feel like that might make things go a little quicker for us. Is there any chance of doing like a consent agenda and putting final plats in that consent agenda along with minutes and? Yeah, we, we've talked about that as well. Um, we could do that and um, I, I'd need to look back through code to make sure that that's allowed. But if that's the wish of, of the commission, we could certainly do that. I'm just kind of looking for a head nod um, from everybody. <laughs> that that's, that's okay. All this is done before the public hearing. So really, what, what time are we saving? We're just saving what time we start these meetings. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie, we could do a consent agenda, and then if they saw something that they wanted to discuss, they could pull it off. Pull onto it a off. business item. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah. if it's just if there's a discrepancy between the preliminary and the final, then that obviously yeah. wouldn't be in the consent agenda. But it doesn't look like there's right. that many at all. Well, and if there's a huge difference, yeah. 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 Well, and and typically, if there's dramatic changes to something, it's not going to get this far. We're going to make them revise the plat and meet the plat conditions. Yeah, so. we'll pull off the agenda. So, yeah. Would all the information in the packet be the same? <clears throat> yeah, we would just so. provide the same information. We wouldn't. Uh, we may not. Uh, I guess it just comes down to presentation here. Whether you want to see a full presentation, um, or or not. Yeah. Right. We've already gone through it. So. Yeah. Here's my head nod. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to do the work. You can just forget it. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> then tonight, we'll try it out. There you go. All right. Good idea. <laughs> it blows okay. up in our face on yeah, you got three minutes. <laughs> Are you doing the next one on the agenda as well? I am. Yeah, so we confirmed this. I think I mentioned this the last time we met. Um, March 17th is when City Council is going to um, have that workshop. It's from 7 to 9 a.m. Um, they, I, We indicated to them that we'd like to have our discussion as much as possible um, be at the front end of this meeting so that those who have uh, work commitments can get to them. But they're going to they're gonna go over... Um, strategic planning at that meeting and so the mayor has agreed to do do her best to to get as much po done as possible at that first uh, the first of that meeting so just wanted to remind you of that <laughs> no <laughs> and then i think i've got the next one too okay madam chair yes um and we have we don't usually have this much uh, material to cover, but um, we we talked last time we met about the potential of meeting a little bit earlier. Um, the time that we met, we met at five thirty, and we were out of here pretty a decent time, about nine o'clock. Even though we had a lot of meetings, and so I just need a, a little bit of a head nod again um, from everybody. Yes, please. Um, so this is in code. We found out that it's in Title, 10, Title II of our city code, and so we will need to modify the code. So uh, we could do a couple of different things. We could do a change to the code to say um, public hearings will start at 6 o'clock. Then we could still do our adjusting our business items from 5.30 to closer to 6. Um, or we could say um, that it's... Um, it's left up to the commission to decide by vote when you start. So that would mean you as a commission would need to make a decision and make a vote collectively as to when you would start from then on. And we would meet that way until, until there's another vote to change that. So that, that is the question. That is exactly the question. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would, I would encourage us to think about not starting public hearings at 530. Um, and the city council starts theirs at 630, the public hearings at 630. Um, so we could do the same thing that city council is doing or we could do it at six o'clock if you feel like the public has enough time to get here by six o'clock i think six because they can they can email in any comments ahead of time they can zoom in there's a number of ways they don't have to be here in person and if we start ours at 5 30 to 5 45 maybe even 5 55 if you can shorten it up and mm -hmm. and then go right into public hearing at six when we did that at the last meeting it was it worked good i didn't hear anybody yeah. complain inside i would like to see i did <laughs> I heard a little comments like well, we got off work early to, oh. you know, so that would be my concern. Right. And, but that was five thirty, not six. Yeah. So know. if we if we started the public hearings at six. Yeah. Yeah. I believe Ada County does theirs at six also. Okay. Yeah. Well, I vote at six. But I yeah, and I I think you know if if it's if it becomes an issue where we have regular complaints to your office that. 
this is way too early to start, then we can adjust again to 6.30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So based on that, it almost sounds like we may need to look at an option for allowing you to vote. Maybe it's once a year, at the beginning of the year, you decide when you're going to meet. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, that's that provides us enough flexibility to say if there's a case where you're, we're finding that people are complaining about it, we can have another decision and vote again to change that that time, that start time. Okay. You need a, do you need any kind of motion to change it? I don't need a motion. I, I should not get a motion until we go through that um, okay. that public hearing to change the code. Yeah, thank you. Okay, approval of the minutes from January 25th and February 1st. I, I only saw one thing on there where it still had Steve as the vice chair. It needs to get corrected. And you haven't paid me that much, so go ahead and take me off. <laughs> <laughs> so can we get a motion to approve the minutes with the correction? So moved. Second. Second. Sorry. Okay, so moved and seconded to approve the minutes with the correct titles. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Now, report on council actions. Here. He's online. Um, Madam Chair, this is Randy Haverfield. Uh, I'll give you an update from the February 7th uh, City Council meeting. Uh, to kind of fall in line with what Rodney was sharing earlier, we had um, five uh, final plat approvals through consent agenda, which uh, was a total of 244 dwelling units uh, in those five subdivisions. And they ranged uh, from single family lots to uh, to the townhome uh, lots of Smith townhome subdivision. So it's a good mix. Uh, we authorized five public hearings that'll be coming back before us. Uh, as far as action items go, we did uh, approve a reconsideration request that was uh, asked for Salazar Point to get further definition of the, um, the potential layout to uh, make sure that the uh, landscape area met the 15% uh, minimum that we're looking for at the council level now. Uh, we authorized the, the mayor uh, or the city to uh, enter into an agreement with uh, Timber Creek Recycling for uh, the reuse of uh, Class A biosolids from our wastewater treatment plant. It's a great reuse opportunity. Uh, we also awarded the contract and construction for the second dog park in the city of Nampa. Um, also uh, passed in the action items were the right of way acquisition and formal bid process to begin for the signalization of Midland Boulevard and Lake Lowell Avenue intersection. Uh, there were five uh, public hearing items, annexation and zoning requests for Terrace Falls subdivision, again, another, another 97 uh, single family lots. Uh, there was also a, a zoning map amendment request from BC to IL for a piece of property near the Broadmoor Country Club, uh, former Broadmoor Country Club area, uh, just to the west of the hotel ch uh, hotels that are there for um, LD LDK Ventures. They would like to build up to 600,000 square feet of light industrial uh, warehousing uh, in that area. Uh, there was a zoning map amendment from BC to RS 8.5 for Stevens P Place subdivision which uh, is a second, uh, you've seen it, it's the 17 family lots and two commercial lots on the northeast corner of Iowa and Middleton Road. Uh, and then the final item uh, was we did discuss irrigation rate increases along with hookup fees for irrigation. So uh, if you have any questions for me, I can answer those. If not, you have a good evening. Randy. Yes. Uh, was this is Jeff? Was there um, a decision on the irrigation increase? It was just a discussion. It wasn't an action item. Uh, it was an action item, and uh, we approved a 13.7 percent increase uh, in the um, irrigation rates and the hookup fees, which was recommended by the Board of Appraisers um, to meet um, you know the current uh, where we're at basically, and in, in meeting the costs that are associated with the improvements. That the city needs to make. Okay, thank if you. Dan, if Daniel Badger is there, he can speak to this as well. All right, thank you. Anything else? Nope. Thank you, Have Randy. A good thank you. you bet. Bye now.
Okay, business item number one. Do you want to put these at the end and do public hearings or? If we're going to get the abbreviated version, I think we can get them knocked out real quick. <laughs> We'll make this quick. <laughs> uh, this is uh, action requested a recommendation for Heron Ridge number three. This is the last phase of Heron Ridge. Um, the final plat meets the um, code and matches the preliminary plat. Um, there weren't any issues that we could see. Uh, there's a potential motion for you there. I'll stand for any questions. And I'm loving this. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'll move to recommend a City Council approval final plat for Heron Ridge Phase 3 subdivision at 0 West Green, Greenhurst Road, zoning district, uh, including 46 building lots, five common lots for Schultz Development, representing Brandt Agency Incorporated with all conditions of approval from staff. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the final plat. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Number two, Christy. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, this project is Jasper Ridge number two, which was previously known as the Chase Subdivision, the RS6 zone. Um, it meets the preliminary plat as it was designed and approved, and it conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards, and this is your motion. I will stand for any questions. Madam Chair, I'll move to recommend City Council approval of subdivision and final plat approval for Jasper Ridge, subdivision number two at Zero Middleton Road, RS6 district for Schultz Development, Brent Business and Brent Holdings LLC with all conditions of approval. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve this final plat. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and the third one. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. This is a recommendation of approval for Silver Star Subdivision Number 4. It is located in an RS 8.5, RS 12, and RS 18 zoning district. Um, it does conform to the preliminary plat that was approved by you, and it does conform to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards. Here is your potential motion. I will stand for any questions. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a City Council approval of the subdivision final plot approval for Silver Star subdivision number four at Zero Star Road in the RS 8.5, RS 12, and RS 18 zoning districts for Troll West Incorporated with all conditions of approval as listed in the staff report. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve this final plot. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now we're on to public hearings. Fastest lightning. Mm -hmm. What? I think it works. <laughs> Three minutes. Good job. That's awesome. Okay, public hearing number one, uh, zoning map amendment for Sugar Creek townhomes. We have the applicant here. Good evening. Uh, I'm Chad Slister, Slister Ugrin Architecture, uh, on behalf of Kyle Sales. Uh, I think the theme is to move along quickly, so I'll keep it short and sweet and let staff <laughs> jump in. Um, quick overview, uh, about seven and a half plus acres. Uh, we're trying to get 85 units uh, of multifamily there. Uh, we're meeting, we come in as a PUD to give us a little bit more latitude on a few things. We're surrounded by RD um, for the most part, other than a single family at the corner. The location of this is really Victory Road and uh, South uh, Sugar. Uh, we're bounded on the southwest by Indian Creek, on the northwest by the railroad, uh, north of that a little bit of uh, third, and then we have some multifamily immediately to the uh, southeast. Across Indian Creek we have multifamily and across um, the railroad we have multifamily as well. So kind of fit in the mold for the most part. Um, the PUD is actually allowing us to get a little bit more dense than the RA allows us to do. Um, but I think all in all, we're, we're kind of fitting the criteria of the area. Um, 
don't see anything that's magical about it, I'll let staff do their presentation and then follow back up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Doug Critchfield. Um, so this is a 22 unit uh, residential buildings. Uh, they're duplex, triplex, and primarily fourplex buildings. Um, there are three common lots, 16.2% uh, is qualified open space. And the gross density is 11.08 dwelling units per acre. Uh, as the applicant was talking about, this is the surrounding uh, development. Um, this is within city limits and uh, the uh, medium dense, the residential um, land use setting for this area um, is allows for the RD, R, excuse me, for the RD zoning district to, uh, to occur in this area. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, two family duplex apartments uh, to the north, um, apartments and townhomes to the south, um, single family homes and apartments to the east, and single family duplex and apartments to the west. This is the, uh, an aerial of the, uh, the site. It's bound on 3rd Street North, uh, just a little section there <clears throat> that turns into Vickery Road and then uh, South Sugar. There are some single family parcels immediately to the west and a little bit to the north off of South Sugar Avenue 9 and I believe they're addressed at 9 and 15 South Sugar. <clears throat> this is a, uh, an aerial view of the site. The, to the left, this is looking from the south onto the parcel and then uh, looking from Sugar Street onto the parcel on, on the right hand side. And that's from the east side. This is uh, uh, the plat that was uh, proposed by the applicant. Um, there's uh, parking. Uh, there's a open space area along Indian Creek with a play area. Uh, there's a dog park adjacent to the, in the center units, the center portion. Uh, to the south side of those center units is a dog park. And uh, then there's uh, landscaping uh, on Sugar Street as well as 3rd Street North and, and throughout the subdivision. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, per the Napa Engineering Division, there's sewer, water, and pressure uh, irrigation available at the site. Uh, the project is proposing to uh, a pump station to pump sewage into the city's gravity main, and it will require a Department of Environmental Quality approval in order, order to be able to do that. Uh, the police station is about 1.4 miles away. Fire is 1.3 miles away. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are um, schools, um, there, none of them are within walking distance. Uh, the school district indi indicated that none of them were impacted. Um, <clears throat> City Hall is 1.9, Library is 1.4 miles, and Lakeview Park is a one mile um, distance from this uh, facility. Compass gave us a report and indicated that it will need bicycle infrastructure and the application, or the applicant has indicated that they'll provide bicycle parking on this uh, project. It has access to the center of the community. It has a positive net fiscal impact and it preserves farmland by uh, increasing the density. Um, the conclusions of law pertinent to uh, zoning map amendments is stated in your staff report and as always I'm glad to uh, review these if you have any questions about those. Um, in terms of the RD zoning district, the purpose uh, is stated in the staff report, um, being duplex, triplex, and fourplex buildings, the development is a permitted use within the RD zoning district. In terms of uh, Chapter 26 and plan unit developed subdivisions, um, there are some things that the commission will need to determine to, con uh, to give consideration to this project. And I will just review a few of those with you because we don't get too many PUDs. Um, so, uh, the development uh, needs to be consistent um, with the area and it uh, needs to be consistent with the comprehensive plan and it has to have a beneficial effect on the community. This does provide 15% in qualified open space. Um, it does increase the density, uh, density, but the density is compatible with the surrounding developments, um, the majority of them with the exception of the single family. Um, the density and development types are appropriate for this medium density residential land use and the area surrounding um, is in the same land use setting. Uh, there's a potential in the future that we'll be bringing to you, uh, to the commission and to the council, consideration to, uh, for the whole area to be changed to high density residential, which would match more what's, with what's on the ground, and that would be a comprehensive plan change in the future. 
Um, in terms of the landscaping, um, there, uh, th there is, because uh, Indian Creek is a flood zone, uh, the units were not, or floodway, the units were not located down in Indian Creek. Uh, and trails are going to be required by the Parks Department on the railway to the north, as well as on Sugar Street. Um, the siting uh, looks uh, between structures, and, and it overlooks Indian Creek, and it's set back off of South Sugar uh, Street. So the impacts of the siting uh, on Sugar Street are, uh, are lessened because of that. Uh, and also there's good separation between the structures and uh, covered parking will pe be provided in uh, some of the parking areas. Um, I already mentioned the floodway portion of this. Um, the maintenance that's mentioned again in the, uh, the findings for this uh, section of code, uh, those can be achieved in the CCNRs and through uh, either that or through a property management uh, for, the, for the site. Um, and the open space in the plat uh, can also be maintained and owned by the by the development. We did receive correspondence on this. Uh, those that correspondence, I, I would point back to the staff report. Uh, in terms of significant correspondence, um, the Nampa Meridian Irrigation District uh, that uh, recommended that uh, that they any any surface drainage that leaves the site requires um, a field land use change application, field filed land use change application uh, prior to final platting. So that's something we're gonna have to uh, keep an eye on. Um, and the engineering division had several comments about the project. Again, I would point back to the staff report. There wasn't anything significant in the way of traffic as I reviewed the engineering uh, comments. Uh, and so a traffic study was not required on this site because of the, the nature of the project and the number of units. Um, and uh, the other comments from the engineering division largely had to do with um, the utilities and uh, citing the, the, the structures. In terms of uh, <clears throat> public comments, we had one uh, gentleman, uh, Michael Smith, who sent comments this, this morning, uh, had a question about the number and types of buildings. Um, there was no opposition or favor given in those <clears throat> comments. And uh, hopefully uh, this presentation will answer those questions. Uh, for, uh, for Mr. Smith. Um, <clears throat> the final analysis on this, um, the, the lot sizes are within the range that are permitted in this uh, zoning district. Um, again, it's compatible with the surrounding areas. The, the lot widths um, meet the minimum, or they're above the minimum average of 30 feet for this zoning district. Uh, landscape plan was submitted and was approved by the city forester and has also been reviewed by planning and zoning staff and is approved. Um, the pathways and open space um, are provided and um, or there will be provided that be required to be provided and uh, parking uh, exceeds the minimum requirement on the number of spaces that are required plus the ADA parking. <clears throat> the conditions of approval are stated in your staff report um, and uh, have the uh, motion for you this evening. I'll take any questions. Doug, I have a question yep. for you, please. Mm -hmm. um, on page 107, paragraph number five, uh, about the pressure irrigation, it says applicants shall provide CCNRs with the final plat submittal addressing shared ownership and maintenance of the irrigation system for the in the city's right of way, right to shut down service for the entire develop entire development. My tongue's getting all tied up here. If any property fails to pay the irrigation assessment, so can the can the uh, HOA step in and pay those and, and somebody doesn't? Looks like you're going to answer the question. Yep. <laughs> that, that was an engineering condition, so I will, I will let Doug off the hook on that one. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Kehoe, what we have found is in these types of developments, um, it is much more practical where one management company and one landscape company is handling all of the... Um, maintenance of the landscape to have a single point of connection for the development uh, to the city's irrigation system rather than having a connection point at each individual lot. The difficulty that runs us into is if one property owner does not pay their fees, um, we have a more difficult time shutting them off. So um, yes, the, the HOA could be set up such that um, 
they they can step in and pay the bill. We don't we don't care who pays the bill. Right. Exactly. Um, if as long as the bill gets paid, we leave the water on. Um, so that is certainly something it, we have explored options in our per, or in our billing software um, to be able to send a a um, notice rather than a bill um, to a second party. So the landowner would get the bill. A notice would go to the HOA uh, of the bill, so that if something happened, they could step in there. Yeah, um, moved that's not and something. Didn't pay it, then what are you going to do? Um, and that's not something that we currently have the ability to do. It is something we are exploring with um, our future vendors on that software um, that we're exploring right so now. We're, so we're not going to really do what we said we're going to do. We're going to hope somebody else is going to pay it. Well, if if we don't get a if if yeah, we, we have a paid. lack of yeah. payment, yeah. yes, we entirely may shut yeah, that that's off. That's not going to happen. Yep. Okay. Wait, wait, while you're up there. Wait, mm-hmm. wait, wait. Oh, oh. Um, has anything with this development and further developments that are happening happening down Victory? Is there any talks of anything being done with the railroad bridge that goes the road that goes under the railroad bridge there at third? <laughs> That that's, is a that's kind of sketchy and scary and it's kind of fun. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Miller, that is a discussion point. That is a very expensive discussion point. Oh, yeah. um, but it is something that is being discussed. Um, I cannot say that we have a plan and a funding mechanism today to do something there, but it is something we are looking at. Thank you. That's the city's responsibility, not UP or not Union Pacific. That's that's part of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's certainly one of those things that, um, it, because of the hill and the curve and everything there, it it is somewhat problematic, um, and it's not as tall as we would all like it to. Um, it gets clipped by uh, box trucks on a annual basis, probably. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's all part of our discussions. Okay, Steve, you had another question? I do. I do. You wouldn't let me finish. So, uh, Under the Safe Routes of School for the Endeavor Elementary, uh, it's a half a mile walking distance and says sidewalks needed in several places. Now, is that just a suggestion or is somebody going to say, oh, you got to put a sidewalk in in front of your property because it's connected on your left and on your right and you're not, so you got to put it in? And what's what we got here? Many of the gaps are not properties that are located within the city limits. Uh, um, and so there are, there are areas where um, yeah, the right-of-way is not available to do that. Um, they're up near Endeavor, um, a asphalt path on the north side was put in a number of years ago, um, not too long after the school was put in, um, that provides some of that, um, but there are still some gaps um, in place there. So you just got to hope that somebody will fill it in for you. Uh, we, it's one of those that unless we have a Safe Routes to School grant or something that will allow us to purchase right-of-way, um, or if there are people that are willing to dedicate right-of-way, um, we could look at that, but that's not something that is right. a general practice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Okay. We're going to open public hearing. I have the sign-up sheet here. I have Pat Colwell. You do not wish to speak, or you do now? I'm just the engineer, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And just then- the engineer, huh? <laughs> Then we have two people that are undecided, Nicole Galen and Cliff Galen. And Cliff wanted to speak. How are you guys doing today? Give us your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Cliff Galen. I'm at 13 South Sugar Loop Lane, so uh, apparently the southeast side of it. Um, first, I wanted to, we're not against the property being open and then building on it. Our concerns are like a fence line because of where they're putting some of their uh, buildings, it's going to be really close. And then how tall up they, or how high they go, being able to see in through the windows and stuff. Um, so uh, we're talking 
to chat before previously? Yeah. Um, he said that to come down here, bring that up as a concern, mm -hmm. because we do not have a fence. Well, it's uh, what, chicken wire. Okay. So, you know, there's nothing there. Another thing is, um, I saw that they were doing a park. We have a bunch of kids in our area. I don't know what they're doing across the street with that plot, you know, when, it, when they start building homes, if there's gonna be anybody. But there aren't parks close, and if there would be access for the kids, instead of having the kids just wander over and cause issues. Those are real, I guess, simple questions with mm -hmm. it. But uh, talking about the roadways that this gentleman was doing, uh, you guys need to do a study out there because we do have semis that park on the road. Um, for our section specifically, uh, the what is it? Let's say four car lengths. You get the bigger trucks in there, I can't see around. And there was one time I literally had a car pull in front of me, you know, uh, coming down sugar because I couldn't see them and I'm looking at the other way. You know, not, you can only edge so far up. And so was that four car lengths from where we ent or enter and leave our neighborhood for th the opening of this place. That was a big concern that I brought up with the gentleman. And then across the way, when they put in theirs, all that extra traffic, it's going to be a really interesting thing, if you will. Okay. You know, I, just because of, like I said, the issue that we've had. And we do have some, uh, a couple gentlemen that uh, park, like to park their semis there. When they do that, it's always move your stuff. Our HOA tells us we're not allowed to have RVs, big trailers in the area. Mm -hmm. And that's one big reason, because you cannot see around it, even though it's open parking and... Yeah. You know, I believe that's on city side, not on ours. So that was all of our concerns, really. Okay, when we'll get the applicant back up here, and we'll address some of those. Is there anybody else that did not sign up that would like to speak for, against, or undecided on this proposal? Okay, can we, Chad? Do you want to come on up and? Hello again. Hello. Um, to the point, I think that uh, if you look at the entrance, um, can you put back up one of the site plans? Uh, the entrance to Sugar Loop and the entrance that we're proposing, um, I believe he's absolutely correct. If anybody's parking in that little stretch, it's especially if it's a big rig, it's a problem. But that shouldn't be our problem, right? Uh, or theirs. It just needs to be leased in some fashion, I think. Um, and I don't know if it's just a no parking, which that doesn't necessarily stop. It's people, already a city ordinance that says you can't have commercial vehicles. So yeah. you just call the police and they should have somebody come out there and yep. ticket the vehicle. Yeah. Because we, um, an early, early concept actually had two different entrances into the property, one also off of third, but that was eliminated just because of the concern with everything going on there. So that yep. really is the only access point to the property. Um, so I think that piece is, is okay. Uh, fencing, you know, uh, between the, the development there on the southeast and us, I don't think that's a, a deal breaker by any stretch, uh, are limited in height, so on the fence. So, so that wasn't in your preliminary plans to put to fence the, uh, the whole I guess it's up in the air okay on that but you know it'd be a six foot fence that's not going to stop a second story from looking into a backyard but uh, we are outside making sure we're maintaining our uh, setbacks for our building so that um, is being maintained I understand the situation but um, we need to kind of plan accordingly for our stuff as well mm -hmm. so I think that that works as far as access to the playground that's really a, a liability issue I guess uh, the playground is for the residents of the of this property it's not a neighborhood playground or a city park mm -hmm. um, would love to say that it should be accessible but they really... make friends with the other kids and exactly. they can bring them over <laughs> exactly so it, you know it's it's not a city park right it's it's for the residents so that would be that um, the one item uh, of condition that is of concern, I guess, or I guess want to clarify, 
uh, the pathway requirement up along the tracks. Not opposed to providing, but what we'd like to do rather than have a duplicate path, we have a sidewalk and everything at the front between the residence and the parking, make that a little bit wider, allow them to come through there rather than minimize the access on the back and start putting people in people's backyards or front yards, depending on how they all work out. But um, that would be the only, I guess, thing that I would caution on how we would, how we would like to address it anyway. Let people pass through along the path, but bring them inboard rather than at the at the back of the property there. So you'd bring the people down the path right in, yeah, I, right in front of the, right between the parking spots and the buildings. Yeah, there's a so sidewalk. instead of walking in the back, they'd be walking in the front. Right, there's a sidewalk there already, rather than paying for two sidewalks. And if we put a sidewalk to the back on the uh, railroad side, we're actually going to need to pull things forward to give some adequate space back there. So rather than duplicating cost, uh, I believe the city does that with some of their uh, pathways. They just widen out the sidewalk to allow for more access through there. This would be people who don't live in this development. I would prefer personally that walking yeah, down not that. not be required, but uh, we tried that uh, at our work session initially and, and staff and the parks really thought that would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. It's it's a liability Everybody issue. Everybody has to do that. So. Yeah, it's a liability issue. Yeah. So you know, and keeping them away from the the tracks is probably better. Bringing them inboard rather than having them on the tracks. So, just for consideration, I suppose. Um, any other questions or concerns or? Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the applicant? No. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. I have a question about the path then. So can you guys address if what he's saying is going to be something the city's okay with or the parks department or is that something that has to get back to the parks department? Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> um, when Cody and I talked about it, I asked Cody to just reference the bike and ped master plan mm -hmm. as far as what has been denoted on there. And then if they wanted to propose an alternative route to that, they certainly could, which they have done. Um, so it is really up to you guys to say, nope, we're going to stick with the master plan. It needs to follow the railroads or that you're satisfied with the route that they've proposed. And then probably what we would do is have them note that on the plat that it would be for public access. Okay. <laughs> When you walk along those paths along the railroad and all that, you feel like you're on public property. So you feel like it's okay to be there. But when you start directing them through a subdivision or a apartment complex, people can feel like, oh, no, no, I can't go here because this is private property. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too sure that's a good idea. I think you're going to kind of defeat the purpose of the pathways along the public right-of-ways. Okay. That's my feeling. Okay. Entertain a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay, public hearing is closed. Yeah, that was my that was my question about the path. It just didn't make sense. Maybe I'm not envisioning it, but I just as a as a public walking through a that's an invitation to bring your dog bring your kids every, you know that well, then they're going to yeah. stop and play in the playground they're going to stop and, and, and use the dog park and they're yeah. going to complain about the dogs and everything else so yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think uh, that'll have to leave it the way it and is. i understand the applicant's reason for yep. that but i think the pathway should be public and right out on the public mm -hmm. i agree you can ask people not to play in your playground you don't want to direct them towards the playground <laughs> <laughs> Stopping. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep walking. No stopping. Um, I'd like to ask Daniel any concerns with how close those two entrances are. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Morgan, as noted in our report, the access spacing there does not. Uh, necessarily meet our um, requirements. However, they have done 
a analysis, uh, a traffic engineering analysis on those approaches to determine that they can operate safely. Um, this is one of those situations that um, based on the, the property dynamics and the where their parcels lie versus the old ones, I, I don't think we could have a perfect situation there. Right. Um, from what we have analyzed um, and the with the traffic volumes that are there and are expected from this development and future growth in the area, I'm comfortable that it can operate safely. Okay. Is there a possibility that we could put up some no parking signs between the two to help mm -hmm. them maybe that stop that is certainly what as I was sitting there um, if if there are um, the so so sugar there is a local roadway it's not a collector or an arterial um, just based on the the geograph geography there and and how it sits um, so if I remember correctly Rodney you did say that local roadways <coughs> semis are are Commercial vehicles are prohibited from parking on those? In subdivision. It, only in subdivision. Okay, so this one would not. So what I would say is if we can get notified of when those are out there so that we can go document that, we can take that to city council to, to have that designated as no parking. Um, that does not, that puts signs there and puts people on notice. It does not necessarily get police there enforcing it. Um, but it does at least have um, the ability for notice of those people that, hey, I, I can't park here. And with the police department, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, really works. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anything, sir? We've closed public hearing, I'm sorry. We can't take any more comments from the gallery. I'm sorry. What do you guys want to do? Madam Chair, I will make a motion to recommend approval of the zoning map amendment from RA to RD, Zoning District Potential Development Agreement, for a planned unit development and subdivision preliminary plat for Sugar Creek Townhomes, subdivision at 2205 Third Street North for John Dixon, representing Bunker Development, LLC with all conditions listed in the staff report and according to conclusions of law, I just want to make sure the, the pathway as it exists in the staff report is along the railroad. Okay. I'll second that. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. <clears throat> Point of clarification. So the, the six-foot fence um, at, on the southeast property line should, should be a, an additional condition if that's oh, what oh, you yes. desire to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My, yeah. You still? And adding that, yeah, second? six foot. Okay. okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to um, recommend the zoning district. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. <laughs> opposed or? I did, so I win. Okay, so. I am for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that will go on to city council. Okay, public hearing item number two, annexation and zoning to IL on Eustick Road. And continued. Oh, yeah, I read the blue. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, so we don't hear anything. We just, we just open it, open public hearing. Continue it and move on. Correct. Okay, we'll open public hearing on the annexation and zoning to IL zoning district at zero <laughs> and zero Eustick Road, located for Red River, Idaho LLC, representing Dana Kyle Devlin and Hilda Airline Arlene Devlin. And we're going to continue, and then we need a motion now, correct? Mm -hmm. Make a motion to continue to a date certain of April 12th, 2022. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to continue this until April 12th of 2022. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Okay, that one's continued. Okay, action item number three, conditional use permit for duplex in an RX-6. We have the applicant here. Good evening, Council. Um, I am Kevin Duffin. I'm, uh, do I need to state my address? Or? Yes. Uh, address is 16789 North Wentworth Lane in Nampa. And I'm uh, here on behalf of Jeff Petty, who's the owner of this property. And uh, simply, it's just a, uh, a lot behind his property, uh, standard lot size 50 by 150 feet, that he is requesting. It's in an RS6 zone, and he is requesting to put a duplex there. So um, uh, fairly simple. I know there's uh, three duplexes within 500 feet of this property and about 10 within a quarter of a mile. This is a pretty common setup around this area. So um, I guess I'll answer questions after. Just to be clear that then, counsel. he is not going to live in the duplex and he's not going to tear down his existing home? No, no. This is a separate property behind his house. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, Parker. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The action requested is approval or denial for a conditional use permit for a duplex in an RS6 zone. The lot is 0.16 acres. Uh, it is currently vacant. The um, surrounding land uses are all uh, single family homes adjacent, um, and it's all RS6 zoning. Uh, all utilities are available there. Uh, conclusions of law for a conditional use permit needs to be compatible with, um, not adversely affect the livability, uh, provide functional, convenient living, working, shopping, uh, et cetera. That's all in the staff report. Um, <clears throat> Typical building department comment. One thing to note in the engineering division comment um, would be that uh, access to the lot should be, uh, shall be per the city's current access policy manual, uh, which would require that new residential driveways not be allowed on arteri arterials or collectors. So the driveway would have to be from the alleyway on the back. Um, this is a proposed concept plan submitted, uh, it would have to be adjusted for the, the driveways to be on the, um, on the back. Um, slight change, I guess, for, for the applicant there. The uh, <clears throat> uh, comprehensive plan is designated as medium density. Uh, the, um, as stated by the applicant, within 500 feet, there, uh, within, there are three different duplexes. There's more than 10 within a quarter mile. Um, this is a, a common request for this area. Um, NAMPA has determined that it's in the public interest to provide a variety of housing opportunities. Uh, self, safe rights to school, the central elementary is 0.3 miles and that's within walking distance. West of the middle uh, school is 2.5. Skyview High School is 1.7. The conditions of approval are in the staff report, um, as well as any that you would wish to add. Um, there's a uh, potential motion for you, and I have some other pictures too, if you'd like to go through those. Um, I'll stand for any questions. Anybody have any questions for Parker? Do we have anybody on the sign-up sheet, Rodney? <laughs> you sat in that desk, you, you have to work. Okay, we'll open public hearing. Um, applicants on there, which is good that you're for your proposal. Is there anybody else here that would like to speak for, against, or undecided on this proposal? Okay. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Madam Chair, I don't hear anybody jumping up to any comments, so I make the motion to approve the condition use permit for a duplex in the RS6 zoning district at zero South Power Line for Kevin Duffin and represented by Jeff Petty for uh, the CUP with all conditions of staff and condition conclusions of law. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded to approve the CUP. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, now I gotta read my sign. 
Um, this CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the planning and zoning department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on the CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with planning and zoning staff there have been no appeals. Okay, thank you. Okay, another conditional use permit for a non-commercial kennel for up to eight dogs. Do we have the applicant? Come on up, give us your name and address for the record and tell us what you got going on. <laughs> Sounds like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Mary Longoria. I live at 1815 East Amity Avenue. Now, I want me a little, a little, little, little speech here okay. <laughs> so I could remember. Okay. Um, can you pull the microphone down just a little bit so we can all right, hear you a little better? Thank you. Right there. Okay. Uh, the purpose of me being here this evening is to present uh, for me the needing of the kennel license. Mm -hmm. I have eight dogs that belong to different family members. Uh, when COVID hit, we fell on hardship. Everybody kind of went down on hours and everything, so everybody decides to come and move in with mom. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody brings the little fur babies. So I ended up with eight. Uh, this, the plan is not to have them all with us. We have little uh, inside dogs that are chihuahuas. Uh, I have kennels for them outside, and the two large dogs, we have separate kennels for them as well. Uh, we're going to try to, everybody's going to try to move out, and when they do, they're going to take their dogs, and I'm going to keep mine. I have complied with everything that they have required for me to do, as mm -hmm. in getting the vac vaccinations done, getting the license. So I've been pretty busy getting the, the dogs to the doctor. <laughs> but uh, we're hoping that we can take care of this pretty soon. You know, I have a granddaughter that's staying with me right now that she, one of the chihuahuas is hers, but she's going to be finishing school here soon. She's uh, getting her GED. So once she moves out, one of them will be gone. And then my daughter is, will be next. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so we're trying to get everything situated. That's how I ended up with the eight dogs. So how many are yours that will be there as long as you are? Okay, I have two chihuahuas. They're inside dogs. Okay. But I do take them outside because I have a little kennel, a separate yeah, kennel for them, mm -hmm. where I take them outside to during the summer yeah. for them to enjoy themselves and get some fresh air. I don't let them out wandering and loose for them to be out anywhere. And then we're in a busy street right on Amity, so yeah. we can't let them loose, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they, they can easily get run over. Uh, but that's the purpose of me being here, but I've complied with everything that they've asked. And uh, if anybody has any questions. I don't have a question, ma'am, but I do have a comment. Yes. We don't often hear from animal control. <laughs> And when we do hear from them, it's usually bad. They don't ever say your property is in pristine condition like they did at your property. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we try, we, everybody has a chore for them. This is one thing I did say to them. We are to keep the kennels clean. You know, I, we spend amounts of money on these dogs. I mean, because of the way the situation fell, we went and got big kennels for the big dogs. And we keep them in the kennels. We take them out for walks occasionally. Right now, during the winter, it's been hard. But other than that, we're, we're trying to do what we can. Thank you for doing what's right. Yeah, thank All you. Right. I thank appreciate you. mom having conditions also for. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> House rules. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. OK, Rodney. Is it Rodney? No. no yeah. Exactly. Madam Chair and Commission, I'm going to do it from back here. Back there. Um, so you've already heard the, the request. This is for Mary Longoria, representing Robert Casarez, who is the property owner, uh, for up to eight dogs. Uh, comprehensive plan, pretty simple, medium density residential. Um, the zoning is RS6. Uh, it's completely surrounded by RS6 uh, single family properties. Um, here's the reference in the code for non-commercial kennel licenses and, um, and requiring that they get a CUP 
in the Aris district. Um, here are the relevant conclusions of law pertinent to conditional use permits. Correspondence, you've already referenced some of this. I was surprised to see that uh, reference as well to pristine condition of the animals and the, the way they're cared for. Mm -hmm. um, Title four, standard comment from building. Code compliance, no code violations. This is pretty uh, cut and dry project. I was uh, pleased with that. Land uses, they're all single family residences in the area. Um, they didn't designate the number of dogs on the, the application except for up to eight dogs. So I just wanted to point that out, but that sounds like it's going to be eight. Um, uh, and, and she already addressed that she anticipates that as the uh, family members move out, that that number will decrease. <laughs> Uh, no, no concerns were expressed from any neighbors as well. So here's recommended conditions of approval. Those are in your staff report, and here's a potential motion for your consideration. Okay. Okay, that will open public hearing. I have Mary on here for, which is good. Um, then we have uh, one person uh, against the proposal. Linda Barrows would like to speak. to give us your name and address for the record. You have to do it, Karen. I'm just going to read what I wrote. Okay. I was a little surprised when it said that there was no concern from neighbors. Um, anyway, I'm a neighbor. <laughs> Can I, we give us your yes. name and address for the record? Um, my name is Linda Barrows. I live at 1724 East Amity Avenue, Nampa, Idaho. I'm here to testify regarding item number four on the approval of a non-business kennel license for 1815 East Amity. I live across the street from the proposed kennel. First, I would note that the notice of public hearing that I received stated that it was to be a commercial kennel license uh, for eight dogs. Uh, on the city website, it stated that it was to be a non-commercial uh, kennel license. So I'm assuming that's what's correct. Mm -hmm. Second, um, what are the restrictions or guidelines for the appropriate type of kennel license? And I think they probably covered it there. And uh, third, I would just, a uh, question I had was, what is the city's ordinance regarding bark barking dogs? Now, I have lived at my address for over 30 years, and I have a good relationship with the residents at 1815. But my husband and I are opposed to allowing approval of this kennel license because of the reality of increased noise from an increased number of barking dogs. I love working out in our yard and our garden. These neighbors have had a large number of small dogs and pins in their yard in the past, and I've seen two larger dogs, one of which German Shepherd chained up on the outside. I can testify that these dogs have barked when I was in my yard for various other reasons. I also feel that the large number of dogs uh, would bark at persons and bikes, et cetera, that are walking down this Dadford walking path. Um, they're, they're, they're property borders, uh, the walking path. Uh, that was completed in the fall of 2021 and is located immediately next to the property for this proposed kennel. Excessive barking would decrease the enjoyment of using the, using the path. As neighbors, we feel we deal with fellow neighbors barking dogs all the time. That's just a reality of being a neighbor, um, either whether in our yards or on the walking path but I feel that the number of dogs requested in this kennel would unnecessarily and negatively decrease the quality of our life, of the walking path, and of the residents of the subdivision. And I have uh, included in my letter, you see the, the three uh, neighbors that are immediately right next to this property. So that's, that's it. Have you had Thank any you. barking after 10 p.m.? No. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody else yeah. that would like to speak for or against? Okay. Come up and give us your name and address and hear what you have to say. Uh, my name is Robert Gotha. This is 
Wait till you get up here. <laughs> My name is Robert Casares. I'm the owner of 1815 East Amity Avenue. And your the, address? Uh, 10387 Hazy Glen, up Idaho. Uh, the reason for the noise of the dogs is because the street got widened in 2013. So that brought more people walking in front of our house. And we bought the house as an open yard. And it was a two-lane road when we first moved in. And now we have people in the Stoddard path adjacent to our property, which makes the dogs more. So mm -hmm. right now I'm in negotiations with some of the city members on trying to figure out, I'm trying to put a fence up to block the Stoddard path so that we don't have my dogs barking at those people. So um, that's one of the reasons why we have way more barking than before because we got more traffic brought to us from when we first moved in in 2005. So um, we feel that, yes, we do have some family members with our dogs with us now, but it's got brought to us. So we feel like our dogs are doing their jobs and they're protecting our property. So that's one of the reasons we have the bigger dogs and the bigger dogs no longer on a chain. We put our dogs in kennels. So that's all I have. For Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. So yeah. on the starter, on the pathway side of the yard, is that is there a fence there now, a chain link, or is it no. just open? Uh, so it was an abandoned Union Pacific corridor. Yeah. Uh, we bought the property um, in 2005, and we've been maintaining the land to the, uh, to the track. The path went up. If you can see now, and that's my property line, from the yellow line to the path, uh, the path used to be a train track, got pulled out and got finished in 2021. Mm -hmm. And our road was two lanes, so our front yard used to be higher. So our dogs used to be farther back. But the city came and we negotiated selling the front of the property, which made our property smaller in the front, which made people closer to my dogs, seven feet closer. And now we have the same effect on the right side of us, which the city brought to us, we feel. Like, you know, like all the traffic and all the people that our dogs are, we're asking to put a fence up. I have an encroachment agreement with the city on that property right here. Uh, I'm dealing with Daniel Badger a little <laughs> bit on it. Um, so I don't know where else to go. I need help at the same time on, uh, the Stoddard path, we are trying to protect our property. We have uh, people in coming towards our house in the middle of the nights because the Stoddard path is there now. Um, so our dogs are protecting us. We bought the property as an open land. It's been like that since 1970. The people before us maintain that property over there. So uh, we would don't know where to go from here. I don't know if we can go have help with from the city to put a fence up to help us, or where do we go from here? Okay. I don't know. I'm confused and I'm lost, and I've been asking for 17 years from help from the city of Nampa, and I've been ignored. And I've been asking from the mayor's office, and I've been ignored. And this is why I'm, I felt like I should stand up and speak on it now, because of all the issues I'm at, so I don't know where to go. Thank you. Thank you. So Daniel, do you wanna, well, is there anybody else that, is there anybody else that wants to testify for, or against, or undecided? Okay, all right. He was hoping you were going to forget. You yeah. <laughs> if you have questions, I'm always going to answer them. the same question. <clears throat> so the property line is that orange line. Correct. So he has like four feet beside of his house, and then the rest of that grass area that he maintains is city property? It is. So based on um, what we've looked at, uh, back in, he's correct, back in the 70s, the aerial photos that we find, uh, show an encroachment into Union Pacific's right-of-way. 
uh, with those improvements, grass and stuff there. Right. Um, when the city, when the Union Pacific Railroad deeded the property to the city um, for the Rails to Trails program, mm -hmm. um, it, that encroachment uh, remained. Um, when the city negotiated for the purchase of the right of way to do the um, improvements to Amity Avenue, as part of that negotiation, um, we authorized an encroachment agreement um, with uh, the property owner uh, for a portion of that um, right of way or that Union Pacific, former Union Pacific right of way um, until such time as uh, the city needed it for some other purpose. Um, we, uh, as we were going through the um, process for the development, um, it was one of those where the encroachment agreement um, got missed as we were doing our design. So when we were called out there um, last summer, I believe, uh, they were getting ready to do the irrigation improvements and stuff in there. And so we worked with uh, the property owner to pull back those improvements that the city was going to do through that section uh, to preserve that encroachment agreement. Uh, the full area that is grassed in that aerial photo is not necessarily the full area that was authorized for the encroachment agreement when we did our negotiations on Amity Avenue. Um, and we are, we are working with the property owner to honor the encroachment agreement that he was authorized back when we did those negotiations um, and allow for him to maintain um, that area that was authorized and uh, allow for him to fence that area um, that, that is authorized in the encroachment agreement. But the city was not going to pay for the fence or anything. It was his responsibility to pay for the fence or, or was the city going to do something with him? Um, it, it's probably unlikely that the city will fund fencing of that property. But, but he would be able to build it around that whole area, not just on his property line. Is that what you're saying? Correct. So can you pull the... Rodney, Rodney did something. He's multitasking back there. I was going to say, I may not, I don't think I'm in the meeting. Okay. Okay. So um, the encroachment that authorized, um, I, if I'm remembering correctly, it's a 30 foot strip adjacent to his property. Um, so 30 feet from the property line to the east is what was authorized for the encroachment agreement. Uh, that lands um, somewhere there. Um, no, it's, yeah, you can do the measurement. But um, so, so about 13 feet back from that. It's approximately where the, um, the jog in the, um, in the curbing uh, around the signal equipment is approximately in there. Um, and so that's the area that we would allow to be fenced in. Um, and, and we, we have some other issues for some sprinkler systems, um, that have, um, been raised that we're going to work through, um, on making sure that those are, are not impacting the pathway and that preserve his ability to use those, uh, sprinkler systems that may already be there. So if the house sells... That encroachment goes away for the new owner? So the, I would have to review the document specifically. Um, some of our encroachment agreements allow for it to continue to the next owner. Some of them do not. Um, I do not specifically remember the provisions of this one in that context. Okay. But still, they have the issue of the barking dog. dog isn't barking because somebody's coming down the path and it's just barking, you can still call the police and file a complaint against them regardless. After before 7 and after 10. Well, yeah. Yes. So that's, that's, that's the relief for the, for the neighbors, I guess you would say. So you have to keep a lot of the house that got the dogs that bark. I could turn in my whole neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Nope, you've, you've had your time. No, but he only gets one one time to testify. You guys want to make a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Well, Madam Chair, I go back to what I said before. I mean, we very rarely hear from animal control and when we do hear something, it's never anything good. So to hear something good, I think the lady is making a good effort, and she just needs to make sure, or try to make sure, that the dogs stay inside if they're going to be barking a lot. Um, but otherwise, you know, I think she's in a circumstance a lot of other people find themselves in because of COVID, and I'm inclined to help her out. Um, normally, in fact, the last meeting we had, I was not inclined because the circumstances were entirely different than this one. So this one I feel a lot better about. I think she's done due diligence. She's she's made the place look nice. Um, dogs are going to bark. I mean, I had them in my neighborhood, and sometimes you have to put on earmuffs. Uh, I think they're doing the right thing. Oh, and they also want to put up that fence. They're just waiting to find out where. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they're willing to mitigate some of that on the soldered pathway and whenever that negotiation is complete with the city and they'll make that happen too so i'm inclined to to, to say yes also i i really do appreciate the applicant's efforts to make sure that those dogs are cared for um, that your family is cared for and all of the above and it's a temporary situation and it's yeah. temporary. temporary and the cup is temporary also right well that was my yeah. my question is do we want to put a condition that as they move out the allowed number or Goes reduces, down. or do we not even worry about doing that? No. Because once they move out, mom's not going to let the kids move back in a second time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, trust me, they do sometimes. <laughs> Yours aren't that old yet. <laughs> mom's condition again. No, so if there's no further discussion, I'll go for it. I will make a motion to approve the conditional use permit for non-commercial kennel license for up to eight dogs in RS6 zoning district of 1815 East Amity Avenue. For Mary Longoria, representing Robert Casa, Casares, with uh, the conditions listed in the staff report. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the CUP for the non-commercial kennel license. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Matt is not voting. Aye. <laughs> is that a for or against? That was a for. I, I heard Drew laughing, and so I'm wondering if I'm talking too loud. It wasn't me laughing. It, it was the whole group laughing. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> they were laughing laughing with me, right? Yes. Of course. Yes. Oh, at you, Matt. Yeah. Okay. I for the conditional use permit. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so that is approved. Um, this CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the Planning and Zoning Department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on the CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with Planning and Zoning staff there have been no appeals. And I know the dogs are there, so people still have 15 days to file an appeal and then you get notified, so. All right, thank you. Okay, action item number five. Zoning map amendment from BC to IL. We don't have, do we have an applicant here? This is you. This is you. <laughs> <laughs> the logo looks the same as on the screen. <laughs> I was just putting two and two together. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> He just stole the jacket from the guy. He was outside and he mugged him. <laughs> Jeff Hatch, Hatch's Design Architecture. Address is 511, uh, 5119 Briarcrest Drive in the lovely town of Nampa, Idaho. <clears throat> I apologize. I thought we were doing the staff report first and then <laughs> I presented. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Thank you for your consideration of our zoning map amendment this evening. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
The proposed site is <clears throat> uh, directly north of I-84 um, and the access onto the site is uh, Chisholm Drive, which is located directly to the west of the site. The site is kind of sat down in a hole. You have a hill on one side, which is Ridgecrest. You got the railroad track. You got a chemist, chemical plant behind it with a canal that basically encompasses the entire property. And uh, with ITD's improvements, they added a little stormwater retention that also has a culvert. Um, and with that, we have an access onto this property. It's probably sat vacant for a number of years because it's just been a very difficult site to really do anything with, let alone get utilities. And so we have a, an owner, <clears throat> an applicant who I feel um, has a, a great vision for this and is excited to, to move to Nampa. Um, they own a franchise called Bath Fitters. They're currently located in uh, Garden City and they want to relocate out to Nampa. And with that, um, they felt that this facility is and this property is something that they could both locate their business, but also utilize an opportunity to create a, a series of multi-tenant buildings to have other similar businesses. And so with that, they had envisioned um, something that has a little bit of a retail presence, but also kind of fits more into the unique kind of industrial area that we have here. So we have a little bit of commercial, a little bit of retail, and a little bit of uh, that kind of industrial. So in their case, they have a kind of a showroom space, but they also sell showers. And so they need like a large kind of warehouse space. And so that would be uh, what they envisioned for this is, is a commercial flex or, or a commercial retail type uh, concept. So with that, uh, they, they're proposing three buildings um, currently. So these would have uh, large warehouses in the back and then that retail component towards the front. Uh, you can see here we have our, our access off of Chisholm Drive uh, directly to the west. And then um, we're, we're currently working on a secondary access which may come from the chemical plant to the north. You can also see ITD's uh, retention bed. And then we're basically kind of shoehorned by uh, the railroad tracks and that canal. So with that, um, <clears throat> we feel that uh, the zoning map amendment would be a good use for this property. It kind of complements the area because we do have some industrial, some commercial ITD, more industrial uses to the south. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Is Bath Fitters a franchise operation? It is. Mm -hmm. So they would be the, the local franchise owner and operator. Yeah, I see a lot of them on TV, and they all seem to have the same name, but they all seem to be different owners. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll hear from staff. We may have questions for you after public hearing. Okay, thank you. Okay, Parker. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. The Action requested from you tonight is the re uh, zoning map amendment from B C to I L. Uh, the site is 13.1 acres. It is currently zoned B C. Surrounding land uses to the north is I P. To the west is I P. So to the north is the uh, as a chemical wholesaler. To the south is I 84. To the east is the golf course and the railroad. And then to the west is the uh, TV broadcast station. History, this property was annexed and zoned to IP in 87, uh, rezoned to BC in 96. So this uh, rezone uh, information was new. Uh, it was uh, a missing ordinance that we had. Um, so the 96 ordinance rezoned it to BC with a development agreement for Dennis Dillon. Um, so if the uh, um, action tonight is to approve with a, uh, a development agreement. This would replace the current development agreement that's in there. Um, here's a expanded view, uh, view of the site. If you can see the um, orange square here, that's the ITD um, storm retention area, and that would remain. 
The future land use map has this designated as commercial, uh, surrounded by industrial, so it can be stretched to encompass this, this parcel as well. Um, utilities, it's all in the engineering re report. Um, as far as the IL zone, there's a large variety of uses permitted, either by right or conditionally. Um, the building height regulations, there's no height restriction. Um, the setbacks, there's a 10 foot um, setback and then it increases as the building ex exceeds 35 feet. Um, I threw the setbacks in there as there was a comment uh, from the broadcast station next door. Um, so we can go back and, and look at those if there's any questions. Regarding development agreements, it's a, a written agreement between the developer and the, uh, the city to uh, make certain um, commitments concerning the use and development. The uh, signs allowed, uh, one thing to note, uh, since this is along I-84, the wall signs are permitted up to 25% of the building or tenant wall. Um, so that, that building faces I-84, you could see a, a good portion in sign, um, not too excessive as each uh, the building is broken up into different tenant spaces. So, um, uh, the conclusions of law for zoning map amendments, uh, that's in the um, staff report, I won't cover that. The building department had their regular comments. The um, one thing to know from engineering, uh, they stayed traffic impact study would be required if uh, for any project generating 100, more than 100 new vehicle trips during any peak hour. Um, I think it's it's unclear at this point with uh, those uses. We don't really know what uses are going in there. So um, as those come in, we can uh, take a look at that and further. Um, uh, as was mentioned before, there was a comment received uh, from uh, the neighboring property, and I believe he's here tonight, so he can speak to this a little more. But um, with the adjacent broadcast station, uh, they're concerned with the height of the structure being constructed uh, uh, on the proposed uh, uh, TV satellite signals. Um, the analysis, uh, it, as I stated before, the future use uh, land use can be stretched. The changing in zoning would increase the, would increase the amount of industrial land, um, which has been viewed as a desire for the city. Um, the surrounding land uses are, uh, there's a variety of uses and that are all zoned IP. Comparatively, IP is, is more restrictive on their um, appearance and uh, use uses. Um, this property is also bordered by 84 in the golf course and the trail road track. So there's a, a decent buffer between this property and, and the surrounding properties. Uh, regarding the development agreement, uh, this has been a common request for properties rezoning out of BC where we would require de design review. Uh, so we'd like that design review to stay in place. Uh, this project is actually uh, scheduled to go to design review next week. So those, those wheels are already in motion. Um, having that des development agreement kind of ensures that if this project doesn't go through, then next projects would still have to do design review. Um, this is the uh, proposed uh, elevations for design review next week. Uh, the site plan was covered. Um, the recommended conditions are in the staff report. Uh, once again, we're, we're requesting that they enter development agreement to follow design review requirements in Title 10. Um, there's a motion for you, and I'll stand for any questions. Does the federal government give broadcasters the rights any higher or better than somebody else? I mean, like, can they say, you can't build a 30-story building next to me because it'll block my satellite dish? I don't know. <laughs> I'd suggest you ask the um, the person who's here representing them um, and and maybe we could look into that I it's just not well, a question I mean, we you know, if, if he says, well, I don't want it and then but there's no federal regulation then okay maybe we can say no but if there's a federal regulation that says well I, he was there first he has the right to that airspace or something then you know I, I have no idea I'm just trying to figure out whether yeah. we're stuck here or whether we can make a, a 
fair decision? I, I've never heard of that um, occurring, but if that is a major concern tonight, we could we could continue the this public hearing and then and get an answer for you. Um, otherwise, I'd I'd suggest we maybe ask the person who has concerns about that. Um, yeah, see what. <laughs> yeah. I got a quick question for you, Parker. On that signage on the side of the building, the percentage, is that based on the size of the unit each end of each person is using? So the bath fitters couldn't come in and have, say, even though they only use in a quarter of the building, they can do 25% of the whole building for their sign and make it godly looking, or do they have to base it on the square footage that they're using? Um, Commissioner, so it's 25% of the building or tenant space. So if they occupy the whole building, they potentially could make a wall sign that's 25% you know, of the whole wall face. But I believe this building is broken up into different tenant spaces. But uh, I mean, if they, it depends on how they break out those tenant spaces. Could you go quickly right back to the site plan where it shows the buildings, A, B, and C? Yeah, so uh, the applicant, I'll probably ask him, but this can be a quick question. Um, what is the front of the property, building C or building A? Um, the front would be building A. So the okay. south side of building A would face I-84. Okay. Um, and we would consider that the primary facade of that building. So building C would be the warehouse then? The back. Well, Commissioner, I think each building has a storefront and then the back of the building is warehouse. Understood, thank you. Okay, let's open public hearing. The only person I have signed up for testimony is Jeff and he's the applicant. So is there anybody here that would like to speak for or against or undecided? Okay. It was a different Jeff. Oh, it was two. Different Jeff. <laughs> oh, different Jeff. Oh, well. Jeffs are represented. Yes. Jeff's here. Um, <laughs> Too many Jeffs. Sorry. Uh, my name is Jeff Hoffert. I live at 343 School Avenue in Nampa. Obviously, I work for Channel 6. I'm their director of engineering. And I've been there for 30 years, and I know that property has sat vacant since before I started. <laughs> um, and I said our only concern is um, just on the, the west quarter corner. Our satellite dishes, um, where were we aim? hit just um, on the uh, northern end of that uh, water retention. Um, other than that, it doesn't, the most of the property doesn't affect our satellite. And we're said we're just concerned. The height shouldn't be a problem if it's, if the drawings that you sent me were I think 43 feet, we should be okay without any issues, but we just wanna make sure that nothing high is gonna go up there to block our signal because it will affect um, our ABC and Fox affiliates. How high would be too high? Um, 100 feet would be too high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know the tallest building in Nampa. And, and does wet. the government allow you any discretion or any rights that somebody else doesn't have? Or? It's usually a city by city. I know in Las Vegas, uh, whoever builds has, they can block whatever because our Las Vegas station had the same issue with a casino. And the casino kept building up, and then they didn't realize it, and their signal to their transmitter kept dropping and dropping, and then they found out that the casino would, they just built right in front of it. <laughs> and casinos have priority. But well, that's a different market. It's Las Vegas. It's Las Vegas. <laughs> so yeah, we just don't, we just want to be, you know, we don't have a problem with someone going there. Um, but it's a satellite signal is our concern. And we just want to be make sure that um, nothing's built very high there, and it doesn't sound like it will. Yeah, it doesn't. Happen. So, okay, it's going to be. We'll weird. put Parker in charge of that. Okay, I would say that if there's concerns for height, that you add it to the development agreement that they the don't build over a certain height. Yeah. yeah. So, if there was anything on this development's roof. Like if they put their own satellite on there or whatever that might be, would that interfere with the signal? For it should not. Okay. Nope. Um, we're yeah, because we get inter we get occasional interference from the airport, okay. but we've got filters that are being put on there. Okay. 
and all that's changing with the 5G. They're installing new filters to protect uh, the satellite frequencies. Okay. So, but yeah, we just wanted to make sure that sure. You know, it was it was about time that property. <laughs> so <laughs> we were driving in neighbor. on Monday, going, huh? <laughs> Someone's finally doing something. Yeah. If you so. need to have your bath redesigned, you know where to go now. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else that would like to testify for, against, or undecided? I would entertain a motion to close. Well moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need to give the applicant a chance to? Did we have any questions for the applicant? Well, Maybe he wants to talk about the height. Actually, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So we just we'll need to open public hearing again because I just we haven't we haven't, we haven't voted. voted. Yeah. We haven't oh, voted. there you go. So we just didn't we just vote? No. 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 We just moved that. and seconded. I didn't call for second. a vote. <clears throat> We're good. I, okay. Now. Good. Yep. <laughs> we know what we're doing. <laughs> it's, it's Monday. Somehow. Madam Chair, Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Appreciate that. Um, more than happy to meet with Jeff. Uh, if it would be a consideration, we are in front of building site design next week. They, you know, scrutinize the design of the building, the height of the building. Um, so if you guys want to put it as a condition that they speak to that, uh, we'd be more than happy to meet with him the next week, kind of make sure that there aren't any concerns. It looks like we're 60% less than the current concern, which is pretty good. <laughs> but uh, more than happy to uh, discuss that with with Mr. Hoffert. Okay, so if we put in a motion 50 feet, you guys, you'd be fine with that? For maximum, yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, now you need to. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Moved and second to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, public hearing's closed. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm. On oh, somebody, I'm. Oh, go ahead. I, I move to recommend approval of the zoning map amendment from BC to IL zoning district for a 120,000 square foot industrial flex complex on 13.1 acres at Zero Chisholm Drive for Jeff Hatch, Hatch Design Architecture, representing Bribbon, Idaho, LLC, with all conditions of staff and conclusions of law and a condition of a height restriction of 50 feet. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the zoning map amendment. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that will go on. See something go up there. Okay. And that's it for the night now. We can go home, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Wait and Final one. Conditional use permit for a daycare. We have the applicant here. I'm guessing it's one of you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kelly Smith. I live at 211 Valley View Road, Napa, Idaho. Pull that mic down just to hear. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm short. <laughs> okay, tell I'm us. I'm not what, sure how this works this first time, so. Just tell us what you want to do. Um, there is a, it was a salon. I'm trying to turn it into a daycare. Um, it's two units, and it, so it's one huge unit, 2,700 and some square foot. Just want to make sure the kids are safe. Parents have a place to take their kids because there's so many wait lists right now for, you know, daycares. Everybody calling me saying there's a wait list and they need more daycares. So I have seven grandkids of my own. Um, three of them were put on a wait list for probably a half a year before they could even get in. So I just, I'm trying to make it better for the kids. Great, it's a fun job for you. <laughs> <laughs> You had questions or? No. Sorry. Oh. We'll hear from staff and then. No, I have a question. Okay. Oh. He's got a question. We have a question. Oh, you have a question. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, we had a couple of letters from people that live or work around where you're putting yes. your business in. Have you seen those? I seen them. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any idea? We didn't. We usually get a police report telling us what's been going on. We didn't get one for your area. Do you know what right. they're talking about by any chance? There is a smoke shop at the end. And then it, everywhere you go, there's a smoke shop anymore, yeah. you know, an alcohol shop. 
When the parents bring their kids in, it's gonna be a double door, and then we're gonna have a security wall. And that security wall will be reinforced to where no normal man or woman can fit through that wall, even they if they break the that. Even if, even if they break them, they can't get in. You're, you're familiar with the concerns people had and you're not concerned about them? No, okay. we've been there cleaning and everything else and ha I haven't seen one transit okay. or homeless person. I'm good if you are. Yeah. Um, plus the hours are eight to five, six to five, six, something like this during the day, right? Yeah. 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 No well, nights. And I did a little bit, I was just kind of doing some cursory research, but is there a restriction on daycares next to or that close to alcohol establishments? No. Liquor we, stores? We uh, spoke with stars and they said we were okay. Where were we at? And we're good. I'm good with that. Yep. Okay, we may have more questions after we hear from staff. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, the action requested from you tonight is approval or denial of the conditional use permit for a commercial daycare at this commercial strip center um, south side of Franklin, north of CWI on Walmart. Um, the property is located inside the city limits in a GB1 zone and is completely surrounded by GB1. The conditional use permit requirements are listed in your staff report and are the standard three criteria for your determination. Um, just for your information, the location if to an alcohol sales establishment um, is just for churches and schools. So daycares do not fall into that requirement. Um, so we're concerned about the adults, but not the kids. Right. Yep. <laughs> um, so there was some public input, as you guys mentioned, um, concerns for the safety of the children with speeding vehicles through the parking lot, alcohol sales, homelessness, those kinds of things. Um, the engineering division also commented on the trip generation for a daycare. Um, it sounds like the formula is based on daycare uses up to 12 children, which turns out to be 54 weekday vehicle trips. I'm not sure how many children she plans on having here, but that's just kind of a basis for you guys to gauge. Um, and the building department requests um, that they meet the standard Title IV building requirements for that space. Um, so they will need to get building permits for anything that they want to do there. Um, the surrounding land uses are CWI, Walmart, convenience store, tobacco shop, a bank, um, are all immediately adjacent, and then there's various retail and office and service businesses across Franklin Road from them. Um, the location and size and design of, and the operating characteristics of this project will not adversely affect the appropriate development of abutting, abutting properties. The project will provide a functional living or civic environment and will be as attractive as the nature of the use is, warrants. Um, and the project will provide an essential service to the community or region. So these are your potential conditions of approval as listed in the staff report. And these are your potential motions. I will stand for any questions. Any questions for Christy? Nope. Okay, let's open public hearing. Is there anybody here that would like to speak <laughs> for, against, or undecided? Okay. <laughs> Does anybody have any more questions for the applicant? Motion to close public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Ladies, I think you've got a great location. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd be looking for more space pretty soon. Agreed. It's a great location. CWI. Yep. <laughs> People yeah. working Sorry. at Amazon, Walmart, going to school. You just don't have any place for the kids to play, though, outside. There's why don't you take up the old Wells Fargo? You got grass over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll, I'll be looking be surprised if you're not expanding. I really wouldn't be. Okay, somebody want to? I will, Madam Chair. Let him make a motion. I'd like to <laughs> <laughs> I can remember how to do this. Madam Chair, make a motion to approve the condition use permit for a daycare, day nursery, preschool, commercial for three little Indians. You can have more though if you want. Uh, in a GB1 zoning district at 5675 East Franklin Road, Suite 103, uh, location northwest one quarter section of 19 and so on and so forth for Kelly Smith, representing Sharon. Zow. 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 Alexander. Whatever. Suckerman. Uh, with all conditions of staff and conclusions of law. I'll second that. 
Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the CUP. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now I can read my deal one more time. This CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the Planning and Zoning Department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on the CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with Planning and Zoning staff there have been no appeals. Thank you. Final question. Nope. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's no. 15 calendar days. Is that including both? Calendar days, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> 